So we're gonna do a quick little demo on some velvet. I did it once and sort of forgot to record it. So we're starting over. So the first thing I like to do is to find what the highest highlight color is in this velvet. We never get a sh like a bright white highlight. So I'm softly shading the whole thing to bring the tone down. So we're never gonna hit bright white. Um, I'm not really preserving much in the way of bright whites within this. I am very softly using a clean brush to just pull out a few of our highlight areas and start carving. You could do all of the um, velvet sculpture with this lift away technique and kind of create all of the indents and the highlights and carve it out. I like to bounce back and forth between additive and subtractive for velvet. So I've created a few areas of like modeling. I'm going to start going in, it's still a little wet, but with um, my darker color and carving out a couple shadows. I'm doing this at the beginning partially to encourage myself to reach for darker values and also to, as I start painting, it's going to get very kind of muddy and messy in here. It's a small area with law of drapery. So this is going to help me keep kind of my structure as I work through it. It's going to give me grounding points. Now, when I drew this out, I made sure to kind of outline not just the actual way the fabric is falling, but the shape of some of the shadows and the highlights. So that gives me a nice grounding as I start to paint. Whenever something starts creeping out of its way, don't be afraid to, you know, you'll see me use my rag on it. You can use paper towel, whatever you need to do, but to kind of capture it and set it back where you want. It keeps nice soft edges that way too. Now I can be pretty brave laying these in. You can see that things are still a little wet, so I'm getting some softening of like the blending without me having to overwork it really with a paintbrush. It's just sort of naturally wanting to blend on its own. I like using wet blending for a lot of the mid-tones in velvet, especially because I think that like soft, liquidy shaping of the shadows and highlights helps to create the feeling of velvet. It's not as graphic usually, and it's not as high contrast as something like taffeta or silk that's going to have like high reflective qualities. Velvet is very reflective. The one we have right now is a poly velvet that we're looking at. As it turns towards the light, I'm mixing a blue, like a greener blue for that like mm, kind of side seam grouping. So that that highlighted section that falls down over the hip and across what would be the front of the skirt um, left hand side front is greener in tone from the lighting that's on it versus we're heading more into purplish colors for our deepest shadows. And we're using cobalt in other areas and that one I'd start to use something more like a cerulean or a thalo. So you can see that slight granular mixing that we're getting that I kind of like for velvet. Um, it's very soft, it's very painterly. It's because the surface underneath what I'm painting is already wet. I'm not waiting on anything to dry. But you can see I've preserved a couple highlights and I'm using my rag occasionally to pull those highlights back out. So right now I'm using a clean brush, um, just damp, not wet, and kind of sculpting a few highlights back into the piece before I let it dry for a stage. So once I get this sort of base layer to a section I, I like, I'm, I've kept my brights. I've got a nice like highlight on that left hand hip. I also have highlights running across the top beams but not a lot of structure yet. I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry. So now that this is dried we're gonna start building more of the like definitive structure of how those folds are functioning. We've got kind of a nice color shift towards areas that have a greener blue, some areas have a purpler blue. Now that this is dry and the whole thing hasn't been wet I'm able to put in more defined and specific shadows and have a lot more control. Always looking at your reference image, always making sure that, you know, you're creating value ranges that make sense, that play nicely and create balance with each other. Everything can't be the same shade of like dark and light and one mid-tone. There's a whole bunch of tones in between. So we want our darkest tones, at least when I'm looking at this reference image, along that bottom edge and in these deep folds on the outside. 
these softer little gathered areas that sort of like are hiccups, not full folds. I just enjoy using a little bit of a softer, wetter blend in that area because there's no like fold for it to get cut around and have more of that sharp edge. So you can just put it down dry and then use a very clean but slightly damp brush to soften the edges of those if you need to. If it starts to look too angular. On these, I'm making sure to preserve that highlight that is right at the top of the fold of fabric so that you can see as it like wraps up and over, it's sort of like a gathered side drape. So there's these like cupped folds. There's a highlight running along the top of them and then a very dark shadow right behind it, but it still blends halfway into it because as velvet turns over a corner, it doesn't keep like a high highlight. It sort of softly blends into a dark one. So we're thinking about how the fabric interacts with light and what makes it different than the satin that we have in other areas. When we work more gesturally or more painterly, I like wet blending for velvet because I think it sells it very quickly. Um, and then I like drier kind of sharp brush strokey effects for my more sheen, my fabrics have a higher sheen on them. Um, but in this we're working very detailed so we're still wanting to make sure we convey the texture, we're taking our time. You can definitely see the color shift between the two like outside corners and that middle panel of the blue. It's a temperature change. And that it's overall pretty dark. We don't have any bright highlights, which is going to be what sets it different from the other fabrics around it. Once you finish your painting. Some of the shadows in this do start to go a little because there's that um, amber light on it. Some of the shadows have a little bit of a blackish, like a warm black feeling in it. And some of them have a more blue and purple tone to them. So keep an eye on that as you're painting through within the context of the whole dress, it's gonna make a lot of sense. And that is the finished velvet demo. I hope that that helps. <laughs>